Over the next couple of weeks, you're going to be my student and you'll be learning the ins and outs of the narcissist tool of manipulation. Some of the very subtle words and expressions that influence the decisions and the behaviors of other people, which in this case are going to be women. You know, sometimes they're very gentle. You may not even notice that that's what he's doing. Other behaviors are big red flags that are waving right in your face that some of you still don't see. No matter what, the more you know about how these guys operate, the better equipped you're going to be to protect yourself. And that, of course, is always my goal on this channel. So no matter which, which one of the 50 different tricks that I'm going to be going over, it may be a few less, maybe a few more. I haven't really decided yet. Over the next couple of weeks, you're going to see that <laughs> his manipulative behaviors, the stuff that he chooses to utilize against you, in every single form that he uses it is a way for him to gain power and control over you. Manipulation is used by men to control their wives and girlfriends primarily because they want to get away with something. So keep that in mind as we go through this series. You know, because as women, well, I, the human beings, period, as we mature and we gain in life experience, the majority of us, I'm not, I can't say all of us, the majority of us learn how to read people, you know, how to read their facial expressions, how to analyze what they say, like their tone of voice, you know, what they live, their behavior, not matching their words. We can identify their body language. We can identify the behaviors that warn us that something is not quite right. And when we see this kind of stuff, the normal response is to kind of be on guard, right? You, you know, you recognize that there's danger there. You need to protect yourself. You need to be kind of distrustful of what you're seeing and what you're hearing. And you need to, you know, put up some barriers to your feelings so that you don't get hurt. But that's, in essence, that's what makes handling these manipulators such a challenge because they like normal they seem like rather normal and loving people you know loving partners even you know platonic friends family members whatever until they're certain that you're emotionally invested in them and then that's when they commence to act in a fool manipulative men only show their true colors once they certain that they have their hook well set and if you've ever fished, I come from a family of people who used to fish all the time. So I learned this early. You got to like when you put the hook out in the water and the fish bites, you have to, to handle it in such a way that the hook sets so that the fish can't slip off the hook. No matter how much it struggles and flips around, dives deep, comes up to the surface, jumps around, the hook is still in its mouth and you're going to get that fish no matter how much it tries to resist. That's what the narcissist the narcissistic manipulator is looking for, for that hook to be set in you. You are not going to get away. The only way you can get away is if you recognize what they're trying to do and you get away before the hook even gets in your mouth. I have to say, though, if he's a really good manipulator, you may not <laughs> you may not see it coming. You may have absolutely no clue, especially in the early phases of the relationship, that this guy is not all that he presents himself to be. So here you are, right? You and you know, you looking for somebody to be with and all this old stuff. So you're looking for a healthy relationship. You want something that's, you know, it's like mutually considerate and it's loving and it's supportive and he demonstrates that he got your back. All this is what you want to be the foundation of your relationship where a dude is looking at, you know, what's gonna work best for him. You want a partner that has your best interest at heart and he's looking at what he can have as his best interest at heart. Here you are thinking that you're creating a foundation upon which uh, a house of, you know, like give and take and, and a relationship that benefits you both and enhances your partnership 
is established, but that's not his goal. That's not his goal at all. Manipulators measure relationships on a cost-benefit basis. I know that sounds harsh and cruel, but that's the reality of what you're dealing with. This dude is coming into your life and he's looking at what he can get out of the situation with as little cost, which means as little investment of either himself, his emotions, his resources, his time as he can get away with. And in a relationship, if he chooses you to, quote, be in a, quote, relationship with, he's looking only to create a situation where he gets from you, where he gets power, where he gets control, where he gets benefits, where he gets privileges. And all of those things are given to him at your expense. So you guys, you know, you ladies, you need to understand that when you are with a dude like this, you think, oh, you know, he just, it was just an accident. You know, we just met. It just was one of those things. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, he chose you. That was no accident. He, these dudes, they choose their victims or, you know, in no scam or they call it a mark. They choose them very carefully through a series of assessments and tests, many of which I've you know, already gone over. I mean, there's like that video series of 25 ways that black men make women jump through hoops. Check that out because that it gives you like a whole bunch of game on what they do. So, you know, you need to understand that over the years I've, I've touched on all these things, but during this series, I'm going to consolidate them and put them into one playlist, one package. So it is very easy for you to go and listen to and get all up on this game of manipulation. Most of you are unaware of these games and you believe that what happened to you over the course of your last relationship, two relationships, three relationships, whatever, your, your previous husband, whatever, you think that was an accident. You think that just happened. You know, it was like a natural a way that the relationship kind of progressed and that you didn't really have any control over it and that neither did he. It just was an accident. Trust me, that clown macinated all of these these occurrences. Then none of this was an accident. He did this all on purpose. So what you're feeling now, how you was used, how he hurt you, all of that is a hundred percent intentional. The manipulative man is gonna do everything he can to create an imbalance of power, okay? He has the power, you don't have none, or you have a little bit, the power that he decides to give you. So he's there to exploit whatever affections you have for him, the love and devotion, all the stuff that you guys love to have for your men, and the generosity that you have. Because you want to cook for him, you want to clean for him, you want him to feel good, you want him to be happy, all the stuff. So you're constantly giving, 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 giving. He's going to be taking all of that stuff, and he's going to accept it because it serves whatever agenda he has. And these dudes will lie to you. They will wear any kind of mask. He's going to disguise, disguise his true self under that sheep's clothing like a wolf. Remember the story, the three little pigs? That's going to be dude. He's in the sheep's clothing, and but he's really a wolf waiting to attack. And he's going to use like any mind game he can think of. And all of this is being done to make sure that he gets what he wants out of you. A lot of you, you, you guys, you just don't see it. That's why I'm doing this series. I know I want you to see it. Now, of course, you're a grown woman. You can determine for yourself if you want to continue with this situation and go down this slippery slope into heartbreak and hell. I mean, that's your decision. But for those of you who are innocently thinking that this guy is representing himself as he really is this is you know he's he, you you're believing his representative you think this is really what's going on and i want you to understand that there's a lot more to these these manipulative types of dudes than you can see on the surface and you need to slow down and over the next seven videos i'll be explaining that a lot more because what you want to do, you know, they have this new term that's called love bombing. You want to avoid letting him do that to you. You want to avoid this, let him sweep you off your feet stuff with sweet words and promises and dreams and all of those stuff of happily ever after. You need to keep your heart and your emotions in check. There's a video about that too. I'll try to remember the link to it. You need to use your brain because you need to be assessing him and to see if what he says and what he does actually match up. 
And to make sure that we're all on the same page through the series, let's start by defining what manipulation is. We're going to use the Debbie's term, the Debbie's language to talk about this. Okay, so I define manipulation as some sneaky, underhanded, indirect way of doing and saying things they use deceptive body language and fresh facial expressions sometimes they even practice this stuff because they want to be able to pull it out in a heartbeat so they can fool you and all of this is done with the goal of using fear and or your emotional attachment which means the love that you have for him against you he's trying to use that to intimidate you into doing or giving to him even if you don't really want to because when manipulation is in play, your fear of losing him, losing the relationship, or what will happen if you don't do what it is he wants you to do, as well as compiled with your compounded, whatever I'm, what I'm trying to say, with your confusion about what's actually going on. Because a lot of you are like, I don't understand. You can feel something's wrong, but you're not real clear on what it is. All of that anyway is being used against you because, you know, he's got to win in this twisted struggle for control and power. You need to remember just one thing as we move through this series, that his motto is all for one, and that one is me. Okay, you got that? All for one, and that one is me. Now, if you don't remember nothing else about what I'm telling you, you remember that, and it will guide you right, because that's the approach that he's taking when he's dealing with you in these relationships, these ma uh, manipulative relationships. Now, I want to cover real briefly. I'll be going into this more in more detail later. Let's talk about the five types of women that they target. They gravitate towards these types because they feel like they're easy targets. They almost always, these women almost always fall under this guy's spell, you know, fall prey, fall prey to his games, his nonsense conversation. And, you know, these ladies end up being very hurt and damaged by these games. So let me go over these. And if you recognize yourself here, that means you really need to listen to the rest of these videos. Okay, number one. Women who are intellectually weak compares to him. These tend to be younger women without much life experience. Foreign women without much life experience or familiarity with his culture. The innocent sheltered women who maybe grew up in the suburbs, you might be black or, you know, Hispanic, whatever, but you didn't really get like the inner city hardcore exposure. You grew up in the burbs, right? Or some very protected kind of sheltered situation. So you're not familiar with game. Oh boy, you just like a sitting duck with a target on your forehead. Or you're uneducated, you know, you or you may be special needs, not enough so you can't function but you definitely have, you know, as you went through school, you had one of those, uh, what they call it, IMP or whatever, EMP, whatever that phrase is. You had one of those. And so you're not quite at the functioning level of a, quote, normal person. But these guys can sniff that out and they will victimize you like 9,000. Of course, you know, these women with no street smarts at all, they might be very smart book wise, very smart, you know, but they don't really have any street smarts. They don't really have much common sense. And these silly, dissy women that are like, oh, OK, that sounds good. OK, you're going to be targets. OK, that's number one group. Number two, women have low or no self-esteem. There's millions of women that fall into that category. You don't think much about yourself at all. So if he comes in trying to build you up and telling you all this pumped up stuff about yourself, well, then when he yanks that rug out from under you, what are you going to do? You are dependent upon him for your self-esteem. He knows that. Once he figures that out, it's over for you. Number three, women who are in desperate need of just fill in the blank. They might need some money. They might need some love. They might need some affection. They need attention. They need validation. They need a place to stay. They need food. They need diapers for their baby. Whatever their need is, he becomes like a fairy godfather talking about how he's going to fulfill their wishes. And he might do that for a while. But that's just to get her dependent on him. Trust me, that's not with any like real caring about you. That's, that's a tool of his manipulative arsenal. Number four, women that he deems to be inferior him, to him in some way. Baby mamas on Section 8 are the number one favorite target of these guys. So if that's you and you got a couple of kids and you in some low-income housing and you he want to leave with you and all that stuff, oh boy, 
there's that target you need to look in the mirror it's right on your forehead and then number five in my list of five women who believe in submission and in being dependent upon men for quote leadership i know a lot of you gonna be mad because you're like you talking about my religion and stuff i don't give a shit i'm talking about what is going to set you up to be victimized by a manipulator now you can be on your feelings if you want to that's not going to change the fact that you also have a target on your head because you're very easy to read and you're very easy to manipulate because of your belief system that's like a you know cookie cutter of millions of other women they all know how to get to you and you just sitting up there just oh so anyway ladies if any of these five things describe you you're in trouble you probably already experienced some of this narcissistic manipulation. If not, you're lucky and you will most likely get a taste of it soon. Maybe you're too young or you were married or what? And now you're back in the single zone. I mean, there's a situation that protected you from it. Well, now that, you know, as you move through life, that situation is going to fall away and you are going to put the, that target going to be on your head and these dudes going to be coming after you. So in the next video in this series, I'm going to discuss some of the key characteristics of a manipulative man in a relationship, how they set you up to be manipulated and controlled and to think that that's okay. This is Deb Cooper from survivingdating.com. Glad you're here on my YouTube channel, learning and growing as a woman. I will be back on Friday with the Dusty News Network. I hope you can join me and with another video next weekend in this seven video series on manipulative men. Thanks for listening. Please share and please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.